Hello, and welcome to this week's Cleve Tech Tech Tip. If you'd seen my last video, you'd know that I'm on my way to the World Championships very soon in Latvia. So I've been working hard doing lots of preparation for the event. If you didn't see last week's video, I'll put a link up on the screen here. But today's video is all about packing. I haven't packed yet, but I thought I better help people who might be packing for the event or packing for flying away somewhere, going on a plane, traveling, I know a lot of the slot races in the US, um, there's a long drive between places, so a lot of people just actually pack their stuff up and they fly, they do internal flights. So this video is all about packing your box and flying away. So let's start with some little handy boxes here that I've made. Um, I'm probably going to be selling them at some point in the future, um, but I've just sort of made them, been experimenting for now to help me uh, pack my stuff. So I've been busy, I've prepared some motors. Um, these ones in here are my 124th Eurosport motors. So I've got a selection there. You see there's a pinion stuck to that one that's ready to go on there. The rest need pinions on. But these little handy boxes, motor trays like this, you can store lots of motors in a very small space. Yeah, see they're quite handy here. They keep your motors from shaking around or rattling around. They keep them all together and stop them from getting damaged. I've also been very busy gluing on gears. So you can see here, these ones are my two millimeter axled gears for my 132nd Eurosport cars. So these are all glued on gears onto various axles here. I've got a few different uh, sizes of gear there. Again, that lifts out dead handy so that I can slide more gears in. Um, again, same size box as the motor box, so dead handy. I've been sort of designing these for my new slot car box that's coming along, which should be along eventually. Um, I know it's been taking a long while, but I'll get there eventually with it. Um, if you haven't seen my video on gluing on gears, I'll put a link up here to gluing on gears. But the whole point of gluing them, again, if you've seen last week's video, you'd see that doing up a grub screw can actually bend the axle a little bit and how much it bends it by. So gluing your gear on helps keep the axle nice and straight. It also means you can turn the boss right down to remove all that weight. And you can see these are drilled out as well to remove a lot more weight from the gear. So they're pretty light, these ones here. I also did myself another little version of some gear holders here. These ones again for two mil shafts. Because you tend to use shorter axles on 132nd scale cars, you can get away with putting the gears this way in the box here rather than having them all uh, across like that. You get slightly less in the box, but then you get two more storage compartments here and here. But I haven't quite decided which ones I like best yet, which ones are going to suit my needs. So I've got another two boxes here. That one's got my 124th scale. Um, axles in or so my 332 axles for my 124th scale cars again some different ratios in there and my 30 second Eurosport motors here got another couple to add to this uh, in here that I'm still working on so I've got a selection of these boxes that are going to be dead handy to travel with I also got round to doing some uh, travel boxes for Falcon type motors for Hawk 7s and that type of thing um, if you notice these little white dots, that's where you could write your motor number or an identifier for whichever motor it is, so you know which motor's which in the box. It's dead handy. Now, also, I don't ne really need many CCAN motors for the World Championships because the production car race, which again I mentioned in the last video, uses a handout CCAN Group 12 motor. So I've removed a lot of my Group 12 motors from my normal slot car box because I don't need a lot of these. I really probably only need two Group 12 practice motors to put in my production car because I can sort of thrash around with that um, on and off in practice for the week um, when you're practicing that kind of class. So I've removed a lot of my uh, decent Group 12 motors out of my box already. So staying with the theme of motors and gears, well, you can keep your motors and your gears in your slot car box. You can take them on the plane with you. They're not regarded as being sort of dangerous items. So these kind of things, motors 
and your gears. They're not dangerous. You can leave them in your slot car box and take your slot car box on the plane with you. Now, my slot car box here is designed to be the right size for carry-on luggage for a lot of the standard airlines. So it will fit in their large carry-on baggage holders. Now that's dead useful because when you get to the track, you've got your normal slot car box with you. You don't have to work out of cardboard boxes or out of packing boxes, etc. You can just take your normal slot car box with you. But you do have to be careful about what you leave in your box and what you take out of your box. Now, although I made these new little boxes here for my motors, my old style of holding motors in is in here. So if I open these up, these are little bead boxes and you can see that they've got little compartments here and I've labelled all my motors in there. I haven't got round to labelling them all in these little boxes yet, but that's where I used to store my motors. But these take up quite a lot of space and they're quite heavy boxes. So maybe I'm going to swap them out for these small boxes. I'm not sure yet. I haven't quite decided for this trip, but eventually with my new slot car box and my new layout that's coming soon, then I'm going to be using a lot more of these type boxes in there. Also, these bead boxes, it's a really tight fit for some Group 12 motors. So Group 12 motors don't really fit so well in here. You have to bend the uh, brush gear a fraction to get them in. So they're not ideal. They fit Eurosport type motors and they fit like FK Falcon type motors, but not Group 12s or C cans so well. And you can't get a D can at all in these. So what do I take out of my box? Well, this one here, this one has to come out because in here are lots of tools. Now, you can see if I hold it up here, things like bits of piano wire, things like you know, grinding tools in here, my little Dremel accessories, some solder, some more uh, end mill type tools. So they don't really like that coming through security very much. So you've got to remove things like that. Anything that can be you know, regarded as a tool or looks a bit sort of workmanlike, they don't like you taking on hand luggage. So you have to remove something like that. But again, the beauty of these boxes is, is I can shut the lid, I can lock it in place like that, and I can pack that nicely in my suitcase and everything stays together. It holds it nice and flat. It doesn't all sort of go into one sort of horrible mess inside the box. So in the next one down, I have some lead weights of various descriptions, some bits out of chassis, etc. Mostly braids and guides, lead wire and some body pins and things like that in here. Be wary of body pins. You can often get away with leaving the body pins in because they don't often see them in there. But if you want to be perfectly safe, I'd probably, especially if you've got a tube of little pins, I'd probably remove that as well from your box um, in case they don't like that going through security. But generally, I leave most of this in my normal slot car box. And then this last one here has some more gears in it. Again, different sizes, different ratios. Some of these are used. Some of these are older gears that I haven't quite drilled out so much. So I've got plenty of spare gears here, some spare axles, but all that is fine to leave in your slot car box. You notice I made these little gear holders here. They fit into these boxes uh, quite nicely if you trim out one of the compartments and one of the sections. So they were dead handy as well. And at the bottom again, I've got another set of gears here. I've removed the cover just so you can see into that box there. These are my two mil axle gears. See, I've been quite busy preparing some Formula One gears. Here we go, like that. You can see that they are very small. I've drilled them out quite a lot and I've lightened them. If you want to know how to do that, I'll put a video up here, a link to a video up here, and you can see me lightening and balancing gears in that one and why it helps. So out of all these trays, the only one I really need to remove is the one that's got all the tools in it. Hence why that one with the gears then goes back into there. So in effect, I've got my motors, my gears and gears, and then I've got my braids and guides, etc. in this one here. These compartments over here, I've got some various sort of small items in here. So I slide that one out and you can have a look inside. This one here, Again, I've got some few sort of odd gears in there. I've got some pin tubes here, some guide nuts, guide washers, etc. in there. I don't know whether you can see that. I don't want to hold it up at too much of an angle because it will fall out. But 
I've got some empty spaces in there, so I'm not making best use of that space at the moment. Next one down, a multitude of pinions. It's amazing how many different sizes and pitches of pinion we've got in our boxes, in our slot car boxes these days. But you never quite know what you're going to use. Again, I probably don't need to take all of those to every event. So again, perhaps in my new slot car box, I'm going to thin that down a little bit, take a lot less stuff. Maybe because these boxes here are a bit smaller than these. You can see they basically they're half the size of this box. And I'm going to make little holders inside to fit these little tubes here. I can actually maybe separate my pinions out and use keep ones that I use sort of regularly in my box and then have another one of these boxes for ones for different sorts of racing, perhaps. But again, all of these... All of this can stay in your slot car box and go on the plane with you. They don't mind, security don't mind about little pinions, etc. Next one down, pretty much what it says on the tin, washers and bearings. So again, I've got 332, two mil washers, some spare bearings. I've got some little retainers, etc. in here. And then my last one, Chassis parts, motor consumables and grub screws. So again, very, very busy box here. Lots of small items. Choice of some motor brushes here if I'm rebuilding motors whilst I'm there. Little short ends of piano wire and stuff to help fix things. I've got some spare chassis parts up here. Uh, some little like, pan hangers and some guide tabs and things like that, just in case it's an emergency. Spare sort of motor screws and set screws for your wheels, etc. Brush springs, a whole range of stuff in here that could be dead handy if you really need some. So again, all of these stay in my slot car box. But then we've got these trays here, much larger trays, and they have what can appear to look like some tools and stuff in here. So I've got like my balancer or one version of my balancer in here. I've got my little axle checker that I used last time, some tapes and some, well, that's my little tyre trimmer there that fits on my hoodie. Again, if you haven't seen what that's for, I'll put a link in the top corner here to my video about my hoodie tyre trimmer attachment. I've got my uh, guide threader and some guide sanding tool in there. So once again, this has to be removed. Now, you may have noticed it has a little cut out here, but these boxes come with a plastic lid. And that's dead handy because I keep the plastic lid and then the plastic lid can go over the top of here. Just a little bit of tape on the sides and you've got your whole drawer nice and sealed and you can put that in your bag that goes into the plane hold and it keeps that tray all organised and nice and safe. And then you can just get it out, slide it back in your slot car box and you're ready to go again. In this drawer here, more braids, some glue. This is all sort of bits and pieces in here. Some bits of uh, wet and dry paper here for sanding things. I've got some controller spares. So mostly braids, a guide sanding tool in there that I have that I use. Um, there's a few bits and pieces in there. Oh, there's my right down the bottom in there. There's my body cutting tool or body wheel arch trimming tool in there. Dead handy. So again, Plastic lid goes onto here, take the lid on, put it into your hole, into the hold luggage, and it's nice and safe, and it keeps everything inside from getting damaged. And then finally, the bottom tray is full of my pliers and big heavy tools, hence why it's on the bottom. Now what's good about this tray, if I rotate the camera slightly like that, is all the tools that are in my door here that you can't take, things like scissors, tweezers, they don't even like rulers, vernier calipers or digital calipers, they don't like them, knives and various Allen wrenches and guide tools, etc. You can take all of those out, they all go into here, and then the lid goes on, and again, it's nice and safe for when you travel. Over here in my box, I have my hoodie tire truer here. Again, I leave that in the slot car box. It's quite heavy, so putting that in the hold takes up a lot of your allocation of weight. The only thing I don't have on here is my big spike on the side, because again, they don't like little spiky things. This area of my box here, again, doesn't really have any tools in it. It's got a gauge in there, but they generally seem to be okay with that. Um, some paperwork, stickers, reinforcing, gel tape. I've got 
my block in here. So I'll be putting another sort of soldering block in there, a flat block, some my notepad, bits and pieces sort of sit in here, some rags and some bits of paper here, just for making notes and cleaning things up. And then of course, along the top, I've got all my chassis. They're not ready yet for the racing. I uh, haven't quite got round to doing that yet, but at least I've put in some chassis that I'm going to be taking with me. And then these two slots here are big enough to put a car in with a body shell on if, if you need to. But bearing in mind, I, leaving most of this in, some of this space down here is nice and big and I can put my body shells in there as well. So this space here, when I'm not using it um, for traveling, the body shells can go in there and then you've got your body shells with you as well in your slot car box. So spinning round to the left hand door here, I've got all my tires. So these are tires that perhaps have been part used or they're slightly larger than they need to be. Mostly part used tires in here, but they're big enough to maybe practice with. Sometimes they're big enough to do a short race with. But again, all of those can stay in my slot car box. They're not regarded as dangerous items. However, all of these items down here, all these fluids, these need to come out of my slot car box. So again, I'll take these fluids, I'll put them in little plastic bags to make sure they're sealed because when these go in the hold and they get shaken around a lot, you don't want them to leak too much and contaminate other things. So I put each one, individual one in a little plastic bag and I actually put them in one of these type boxes here. So I've got some spare ones of these. So I put my fluids in one of these, put the lid on, seal it again, and then all the boxes are identical sizes and it makes packing them in your hold luggage so much easier because you're not packing loads and loads of irregular size boxes. It's just easier if they're all the same size. You might have seen the soldering iron here that sits in the door. We're not allowed to take that on the plane either. So the soldering iron comes out of the box. That again, that goes into the hold. I generally tend to put that in the same box as I put my controller because again, your controller some people can get away with putting their controllers into their slot car box and carrying them on as hand luggage. But I have known a few people who've been stopped at security and said, no, you can't take your hand throttle on as hand luggage. And they've had to go and package it up and put it in the hold. And you're always you know, sceptical whether you're going to get it or not get it um, at that last minute. So I haven't tried taking mine through as hand luggage, but I know people do take them on as hand luggage. And if I could, and if I knew I could get away with it, I definitely would. But soldering iron has to go. The power supply is built into the box. But again, I've got no lead to plug it in. So that's fine. You know, the lead for plugging it in goes into the uh, hold anyway. So I can't plug that in on a plane. I can't mess around with it. They're generally fine with that sort of thing. So that's my slot car box. And what? I do take and what I don't take it actually in the box itself. But as I say, this box was designed to be you know, able to be taken on as hand luggage. So you can carry this box around, you can take it to the event and it's just like a normal event, you know, like you'd normally carry a slot car box in the boot of your car or something like that. Because when you own put up your uh, bits and pieces you've taken out, you can put them back into your slot car box and it's just like working at the track at home. So on you at all times are your cars, your motors, your gears, your spare parts, you've got your tyres. So pretty much, probably body shells in here as well. So you've pretty much got everything you need to go racing, say apart from your controller and a few odd tools. But generally, if, if everything does go terribly wrong, people have spare controllers. You can, even, you can borrow a controller. You could probably borrow some tools because people will have extra tools and bits and pieces. But you're not going to be able to borrow a whole set of race winning cars off of people. You're not going to be able to mess around gluing up gears and spare gears, etc. Nobody's going to lend you their best tyres, etc. So having all of those things and all your body shells and all your cars and everything you need to go racing with you makes sense. Other things to consider are, can you share some equipment? Take this, for example. This is a uh, hoodie com lathe. If you're traveling with somebody or if you're traveling with a group of people, it's unlikely you're all going to need to use a com lathe at the same time. And if somebody is willing to either lend you their com lathe or you're willing to share one with somebody else or they're willing to do any com trues you need to do whilst you're there, then you only need to take one of these. These are pretty heavy things. So sharing some of your luggage and sharing some of your equipment makes sense. I've mentioned it before, but these very small battery rotary tools, really lightweight. Uh, really good for traveling. Um, they don't weigh a lot. 
They're quite versatile, they're quite powerful. They're generally good enough for most simple tasks that you would use them for. As I say, I wouldn't cut out a chassis with them perhaps, but general things like you know, trimming off bits and pieces here or there, uh, sanding edges, that kind of thing, finishing off body shells, they're brilliant for. So again, I'll put a link down below in the description of where you can get these from, from Amazon, but they're really useful and so say they're really light to travel with. Now my box has a built-in light that pulls out from the top here and stand on two little stands here and it's operated via the power supply in here. So you've got a built-in light in the slot car box, you don't need to take a separate light, but possibly you might want to take a small extra light for the pit bench. It's, you're never quite sure what the lighting's going to be like at the track you're going to, so it might be handy. Also, if things fail, do you take a very small spare power supply, perhaps? Um, do you take a spare light, perhaps? As I said before, do you possibly even take a spare soldering iron that might be useful in case your soldering iron fails? Because often, you know, trying to share a soldering iron doesn't generally tend to work very well because you often use it quite a lot uh, in the heat of battle. I also like these little boxes here that hold business cards. They're actually a really nice size for holding slot car stuff. And you can see I've got armatures down here um, and other bits and pieces in there. But they're also dead handy for holding various slot car bits and pieces. And again, you can just put a little bit of tape on them, put them into your hold luggage and everything inside is nice and safe. So what else might you need? Well, I will carry my pit mat. Again, these things, uh, they're sort of computer gaming mats is what they are. Um, I customise mine so I know it's me. Uh, make sure I always go back to the right pit space. But these things here, they fold up nicely. They go into your hold luggage. They, they add a bit of padding into your hold luggage as well. So you can put these around some of your other boxes to keep them nice and safe. I might also have some extra spare tyres, uh, different compounds again, different things to try out. Um, we're there for two weeks at the World Championships, so you're practicing a fair bit uh, throughout each day. You can get through a lot of tyres, and with three rounds of racing, you might need to also change tyres during the race. You can get through a lot of tyres at an event like that. Although I try and pin most of my bodies in advance, I will need to pin the team race body because it's a handout body, so I will be taking my trusty body jig with me. Again, I mentioned this in the last video, but have a look up there and you can see a video of one of these things in action. I think that more or less covers it, but I think I'll be taking one of these with me. It's quite small, lightweight, plugs into a USB, but I might also be taking an extension lead with me. So I've got more sockets available in case I need to plug other items in, but mostly I can do that from my box. I have USB socket on my box here as well. Um, my box only takes one socket to plug in to power everything that it needs. So to sum up, you're fine with all your chassis in your box, you're fine with motors, you're fine with gears, you're fine with a few spare parts and braids, etc. Um, small parts, very, very small parts like pinions and washers and little tiny chassis parts, etc. You're fine with flying with that sort of thing. Um, things like your tyres you're fine flying with, things like your tape and your paperwork and notepads and bits and pieces like that, no problems whatsoever. But make sure you do remove your fluids, make sure you do remove any big tools or any sharp tools, including your soldering iron from your slot car box. And having standard size boxes, easy seal boxes, are sensible things to have in your slot car equipment because it makes it easy to pack and it makes it easy to slot it back into your slot car box when you get there. And you haven't got to sort of um, mess around working out of cardboard boxes because you've got nowhere else to put it when you actually get there. So think carefully about what you really essentially need at the slot car event. Only take what you need, remove some stuff that you don't need, such as I've removed lots of CCAM motors that are quite heavy that I don't really need for this event at all. I still need to make a decision whether I'm going to use these little small motor boxes that fit nicely at the bottom of my slot car box here and my gear holders, etc. And then perhaps I could remove both of these big boxes there, maybe move them up into my rack like that. And it gives me more room in here for more body shells, etc. if I need more space for that kind of thing. 
Now I've got plenty of work to do to get on and prepare a lot of these chassis. So this might be my last tech tip for a while, but I do intend to do some videos when I'm out in Latvia and launch the videos. They might be fairly short videos, but I'm going to be doing some of some of the pit area, you know, having a look at different people's pit areas, having a look at maybe some of their cars. I'll show you the track, I'll show you some practice, I'll show you some racing, I'll show you some qualifying. So I'm going to be videoing a fair bit while I'm out there and releasing it onto YouTube. So keep an eye out on the channel. So if you haven't done so already, hit the big C. There's also a little bell icon, bell shaped icon down here. If you hit that, you'll get a notification every time I release a new video whilst I'm out there. So you can keep up with things that are going on. Um, if you like these sets of videos, there's also a thanks down there. So you can give me a super thanks, it's called. Uh, and make a little contribution towards my videos. It does take me a while to do this, but I do try and keep going. There's a whole wealth of content out there now. There's 60 something episodes of tech tips all about different things. So hit the thanks button, um, make a small contribution if you like what you've seen, uh, it all helps. Also hit the thumbs up, that's also great. Um, that tells everybody that you like my videos and it also makes sure that you see other slot car videos in your feed as well. And it lets YouTube know that you like this sort of thing. So that might be it for now, but I'll see you again probably when I'm out in Latvia. Bye for now.